EDM will always, and I mean always, follow Skrillex. Forgive me for my wrongs, I have just begun. <laughs> begun. I know a crazy statement, but I think you guys will agree with me by the end of this video. So if you're watching this, you're probably an EDM fan or a Skrillex fan or some type of person who's into electronic music or music that's made with computers, okay? We all know the story. Around 2009, 2010, EDM went mainstream, and not just in America, it went mainstream in the entire world. Everywhere, there was this massive EDM thing that just basically felt like it came out of nowhere. Surprise, motherfucker. I would like to welcome Alpha Heavy Hitters, Skrillex, and Getter. I'm Daniel. While it didn't really come out of nowhere and it was a long time coming, the big thing that pushed it over the limit was our boy Sonny Moore. Now, why Skrillex? Why this dude out of all the thousands and thousands of electronic artists that have been out since way before he even existed? How and why did this dude completely flip the music industry and music as we know it on its head? Well, my answer for you is kind of not as exciting as you would think it would be. In my opinion, I think he was the right guy at the right time. Girl, who... Want, want, want he can't even read. To cut it out, dude. You're gonna get us in trouble. Today, Junior! Meaning, I don't necessarily think that it is Skrillex's fault that EDM blew up and became this massive worldwide phenomenon, but I do believe he was the tipping point that pushed it over. Like, he wasn't responsible for the build up, but he was basically the first person who made this type of aggressive dance music in a way that was digestible to people who hadn't heard anything like this before. In the most ironic and corny of terms, he was the drop after the build up. Drop the bass. In the mid to late 2000s, a lot of things all happened at once that led up to this. I'm talking the 2006 to 2010 time era. The number one thing, social media basically kind of formed into itself. You had SoundCloud, MySpace, and Facebook, and everyone meeting and connecting online through these things, as well as other sites like Blogger, Tumblr, and YouTube. You could get your music from YouTube and not just like a song playing with like a photo in the background. Like you could get full music videos through YouTube and you didn't have to rely on MTV anymore. It sounds so simple now, but back then the shit was fucking mind-blowing. Two, music was basically free because of Napster, LimeWire, FrostWire, and all these peer-to-peer -peer sharing services that would allow you to get this stuff at basically no charge. What did I do? You know it's illegal, download copyrighted music. I'm taking you in. <laughs> Because people were using all of these websites and because they were instant messaging each other, talking to each other, and sharing music, a lot of music and genres really were starting to form into each other. You were getting rock and hip hop. Hip hop and country. Getting like these crazy meshes and molds, and the same thing was happening with electronic music. Like you were just hearing stuff get mixed and mashed together, okay? But it really wasn't coming over to the states. At least in what you would consider a mainstream capacity. I mean, you had kids sharing this stuff on all their social networks, but it was more of like a tight niche kind of thing, like individual people sharing with their homies, not like hey, hey, check this out. Uh, radio bangers, like what we got later on. 
Like if artists that made this music came to the States, they could probably sell out a bar or a small like two to 500 person venue. You wouldn't have these massive, you know, 10, 20,000 EDM festivals that we have now. Like where if you throw a drone in the sky and look down, you just see a sea of people. Like it was not even close to that level. <laughs> Not even half that or a quarter of that or hell, even one eighth of that. Electronic music was still very, very underground. Now, from my point of view, the way music has worked in America basically since America's existed is you had some type of thing that was popular and was just the norm that people would listen to. And then out of nowhere, some new crazy thing just punched the world in its face. And that thing slowly then became what was popular or pop. In the 1920s and 40s, you had jazz, blues, and R&B. Then in the 50s and 60s, rock and roll just completely took over everything. Then in the 70s and 80s, you had funk, disco, and like that stadium rock hairband era. Then in the 90s and 2000s, you had hip hop, commercial pop, and grunge music. And then in the late to mid 2000s, you had the EDM boom. Now, Skrillex may not have on purpose basically become the godfather of all of EDM, but when he was thrusted into that responsibility and into that role, he fucking ran with it. And he did it in a way that was very gracious and humble and actually in a way that helped improve the overall scene. Skrillex constantly was evolving and changing his sound and not just along to match with other people, but he was pushing other weird sounds that other people weren't doing. He didn't just stay the scary monsters and nice sprites and bangerang guy. So as you can see, he was just going everywhere all at once. It was like he was taking his position as the number one guy and saying that, hey, it all doesn't just have to be this crazy aggressive dubstep. Hey, hey. You can experiment and do all these other crazy things. It doesn't just have to be limited by genres. It's like he was telling people, hey, you don't have to do what I do. You can be yourself and do what you like. And I really think that because he did all of that in such a short amount of time, it really cemented his position as the king of the overall EDM scene because he was so humble and he was just honestly down to work with whoever, whatever, whenever. And that at the time was just basically unheard of. And basically because he had his hand in so many pies, so many different genres of music, a lots of different people were listening to him and starting to copy what he was doing because he was just so much more advanced than most people and producers at the time. Like so many people were trying to copy that scary monsters and nice sprites growl, it was insane. <laughs> This is how I, I start with basic sound. I mean, I, I take a, it's all from sine waves. And even like, there's even some artists that basically got their start just from trying to copy that fucking type of sound design. And that wouldn't even be the fucking last time that this crazed phenomenon of people copying the sounds he was making would happen. As soon as he released the Jack U project and with all those weird snares and pop sounds, Every single other artist started using weird snares and pop sounds, and this even translated into mainstream music. And then there was the time when Purple Lamborghini came out for the Suicide Squad movie, the first one, not the weird second one. All these rappers and hip hop producers all of a sudden started working with EDM guys starting to put drops in the middle of their rap songs instead of having choruses. <laughs> which had kind of already been happening, but you definitely saw a major uptick after Purple Lamborghini came out. And the most recent one where he does this weird vocal chop thing where it's sending the vocals back and forth with a weird phase delay on it. Okay. 
everybody is fucking doing this now. It's insane. And I really think this is just going to keep continuing to happen because the more he's making music and the more years go by and things change, new genres come, old genres go, people are just going to keep copying this dude because basically he he's everywhere. He, he doesn't have any weird sort of boundaries the way some other artists do. He's not limited in that capacity. And because he's so nice and humble and doesn't seem to really care when people copy him, it's almost like he gives people permission to go ahead and copy him, which then influences the rest of the overall EDM music scene. Like if Skrillex had gotten mad when Zomboy copied him back during the whole Terror Squad and all his fair and love and bro step, drama debacle that occurred. It might not be as crazy as it is where people were copying him because they would have maybe seen that he was annoyed. Even after that whole situation with Zomboy, they then got together, made a different track altogether as partners and collaborators, and basically brushed all the quote unquote EDM drama under the rug. <laughs> They're just a bunch of guys doing as best they can in a very competitive business. business, 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 business. It then told people that, hey, this isn't really that big of a deal. You know, EDM is sample based music samplings like comes from hip hop and all that. And, it, you know, that's what hip hop is. It's the emotion. I still do the same thing. It was a great experience. taking influences from other things is kind of normal and then just kind of reiterating that for the new generation of people and hell even reminding the older generation of people it, it just kind of gave people permission to do what they were already going to do which was basically again whatever they want and for all the reasons that i just talked about this is why i'm pretty sure people will always follow sunny it's kind of cool to see that this guy who basically started the whole shit hot edm scene has still somehow been able to maintain his position basically because he's just been a cool and chill guy and a hard ass worker now he may not be the guy who's always at the top of the billboard 100 charts or the person who's always being talked about in the magazines and in the blogs and the youtube videos but his influence can be felt throughout all the producers in the world and to that extent even going into the mainstream music because you got to remember the people who make edm music usually also make hip-hop music who usually also make pop music the producers most producers make more than one genre of music so in the end skrillex's influence on the edm music scene has influenced the entire music scene as a whole and i believe it will continue to do so indefinitely until the dude puts the laptop down Mess with your ratios of your operators, like you, they come at default at one. And yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, this is how I, I start with basic sound. I mean, I, I take a, it's all from sine waves, and I distort from be anywhere between seventy-five, uh, you know, fifty and seventy-five percent on both of them. I run, and then I run a third one that, in the matrix, it's, it's not bust through any other uh, filters. It's just a Straight solid out. sign, just so it's clean. Yeah. But even then, a lot of times I'll, I'll add distortions and stuff on top of that. So I'll just run a completely separate channel with a sine wave that's just following the root notes. So I mean, a lot of a lot of the sound in FM8 comes from FM8 because Massive doesn't have a sine wave, yeah. and it's you can just do a lot different stuff with, with sine waves, and it's a lot simpler than it really sounds. It's just like when you print stuff the audio, it's those little moments that you actually capture that you that you hear that becomes. The, the phrasing, okay. and that's what stands out, you know what I mean, when it comes to... I mean, you, you're you automating your like carriers or operators or anything, you just keep it standard and... I'm, the, a, lot of the oper a lot of the automation is really simple, like I'll, I'll take even the, the vowel stuff and, and map it to the, the mod, the one like mod it. wheels, and just... and But even the cool thing about Ableton is you can literally pretty much, you know, with sign the macro, macro, you can yeah. sign everything. So I'm just assigning random stuff that, you know, you can, you can take even the... Um, uh, you know, um, even the basic master effects and the, the master stuff and, and, and assigning your X, Y, there's all that stuff. In so. the, the morph pad. Like the the morph pad, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you, you use, to use trash a lot too for, you put your FM synthesis into trash. Yeah. And then do you, what, what are you doing in trash? Do you use mainly like your bass um, cabinets and distortion? Sorry, everyone's no, boring. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> it's, all, it's all, I use trash and, 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 and um, homicide as well. And basically what trash is, it's just like a, a filter, distortion, multi-band, kind of everything. And the new, the new trash is even crazier. You can just, you can, you can take a simple, just saw wave and then you put it through trash and do a bunch of stuff and now it sounds like, Cool. Something crazy, you know. You, I'll send you a preset. I'll send you a 